Hey guys! Did you know that poor mental health and intense stress can have a negative effect on your menstrual cycle? And when you have a premenstrual disorder, this can make your symptoms much worse. Donate today to the IMPMD and help bring awareness to a condition Sal Park should really be making an episode on. And remember, you are loved, you are wanted, and you got this. Now on with the video. Don't you think so, Eric? What? We gotta do something to get rid of her! Yes, you're right, guys. It's my only way out. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic abuse, there is help. If you live in the United States, call the Domestic Abuse Hotline, 1-800-799-7233 or 1-800-799-SAFE or text START to 88788. They are open 24-7 and have interpreters in over 200 languages. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk and I'm here to talk to you about South Park. Or more specifically, Heidi and Carl. Hartman in their relationship. All ships have names, and for the sake of this video, we'll call it Cardi. Cardi T. Sorry she wasn't in an episode yet, or even got so much as a mention. But we have a lot of ground to cover, so I won't bloat the video with a super long intro like I normally do. Albeit, normally I don't do that to make the video longer, it's super unintentional, I just like the talk. Instead, the main question I want to pose is, could Heidi and Cartman have worked as a couple? So, let's discuss. Now, while this relationship was at the forefront of the later seasons, the thing is, Heidi and Cartman have had their moments long before this. Most notably, in the episode Follow That Egg, they got paired up for the parenting project, and when Cartman broke their egg during recess, which would have meant an automatic F rather than blame Heidi, he went straight to Mrs. Garrison to advocate for mercy on her behalf. I tried to cover it up. Tried to put it back together with modeling glue, tried to seal it with a soldering gun, but I give up. I can't hide it. I broke the egg. Hobby and for selfish reasons. I think you should still give Heidi an A on the project. And so, I should get an F and she should get an A. Which means that together, the grade should average out to a C- minus for both of us. What, he doesn't have a change of heart yet? Gotta remember, he's being in character. Eventually, the later seasons had them enter a relationship for reals. And we're gonna talk about it here. Let's discuss again. In season 20, there's a new troll bullying students off of social media, and one of his new victims is Heidi Turner. Not wanting to take it anymore, Heidi quits social media, especially Twitter. So now why don't we all get on Twitter, okay, and just tweet some of the things we loved about Heidi, okay? <laughs> Which to the people of South Park is almost as bad as literally quitting life, if not more so. She wrote one last tweet that said goodbye forever and then just got off for good. No dude, she threw her phone in the river. She's... she's gone. Alright, look, I know what they're going for, but she could just delete her Twitter account or the app itself. Come on, phones are expensive, and chucking it off a bridge when your parents probably haven't fully paid it off seems a little tiny over dramatic. Couldn't she have just sold it through one of those machines like you see at the mall? Or was she worried the troll would find her wherever she went? Because if so, that is pretty understandable. Worse yet, everybody starts to treat Heidi like a ghost. The girls all believe the troll is Cartman, and not without reason, this is Cartman. And Cartman has been acting kind of strange lately, saying that women, on virtue of their gender, are all automatically smart and funny, including Amy Schumer. I don't feel like being funny right now. And that's just the kind of sexist bullcrap that's going to keep you in the kitchen. Because, Bobby, she would have made a much better Barbie than Margot Robbie. Hey, that rhymes. In order to stop a gender war in the making, the boys force Cartman to be Amish. Like, way more intensely than they really need to be. Let's get it over with. No, please, if I can't get out that, I won't have it. I can't keep it. No, God. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what? I'm pretty sure this was a revenge fantasy in the making, disguised as them doing the right thing. Only it turns out that the troll wasn't Cartman, and the cyber attacks still continue. In response, the girls send a message by dividing themselves from the boys, and cement this by breaking up with them. The only girl to object to the plan is Wendy. I don't know if I can go through with this. We all have to be on board, Wendy. Every girl in school, or it means nothing. 
Don't forget what you said, Wendy. Now for me, this is something I wish they really expanded on. Excluding Tom's rhinoplasty, which was the earlier seasons, Wendy is pretty level-headed and honestly, the sanest of the girls. Come on. Bebe held Wendy and Stan at gunpoint just to have access to shoes. What if she and Stan disagreed with everything and simply pretended to break up while dating each other in secret? Or since South Park has handled the concept of scabbing, what if she left the girls and tried to find the real troll in Heidi's name? Kind of like Pretty Little Liars, I guess. I've never watched that show. Is it any good? Albeit, none of that comes to pass, and Wendy is, for the most part, just kind of there. Then comes the damned. Cartman is upset that he can't use his phone anymore, or really any of his devices. A feeling I totally understand because I love my phone, it's my baby, and it keeps the anxiety at bay. But it helps me ground. Heidi invites Cartman to come and spend time with her at the park. A place where people who quit Twitter go, because this was before Fred's came along. There, she confesses something. When women first started getting trolled on the school message boards, I was sure it was you. I guess I didn't deserve a second chance. I really tried to make changes. I really tried to become a better person. Yeah, part of me calls BS on that. The way it was presented, he was making fun of Kyle while trying to also be super PC. One day, Little Red Riding Cow was walking through the forest, thinking about gas. He was on his way to visit his grandma, who was a little black boy named Token. Get over it. Did Little Red Riding Kyle also have great flaming eyebrows? Maybe in hindsight, not trying to victim blame, this was the first red flag. Heidi should know what kind of a person he is, but perhaps she wants to see the good in everybody, or just, hey, general naivety. She presumes Cartman was being honest, or she knows how bad he could be, she just thinks he needs a buddy to no longer be bad. Regardless, the two become fast friends and bond over their lack of a cell phone and their love of female humor. You dip your french fries in the sweet and sour sauce? Yeah, it's the best, dude. Try it. Wow, that's really good. Dude, what if you dip the nugget and the fries and the sweet and sour sauce at the same time? Oh my god, I do that and it's so good. I always save the biggest ones for last. They become a couple and Heidi ends up showing Cartman what a cut open sideways pomegranate looks like. Holy <laughs> shit. I know, right? It's awesome. Kyle tries to apologize to Cartman. Oh, he's like the only boy who actually did. But it's mostly so he can ask him to get Butters to stop the whole wieners out movement. Yeah, right, okay. I I'm being serious, Cartman. Butters needs to be taken down a notch and you're the best Eric! at that. I mean, people go to school to learn, not to see boys pressing pickle. Unless they're pervs. I presume most people who go to school are not pervs. Eric, however, surprisingly, he's not having it. In fact, he's having happier than he's ever been. And unlike Kyle, he's empowered because he now knows what a metaphorical willow tree looks like. But in that instant, you know what I saw? I saw the potential of our species to terraform other planets and reach the infinite. On top of that, his relationship with Heidi is not a joke. Seriously, it's not. I know some people are saying it is, but the way it's presented, he's not being sarcastic. At least, that's how I choose to interpret it. Also, something important I want to bring up. During the Danish episode, Cartman is confronted by the other girls for his behavior, and Heidi has to bail him out. Eric tries to help and you guys call him names? Sorry, baby, I had to step in. It's cute, baby. Afterwards, Cartman gives them a warning, I guess you could say. Heidi has really been hurt by all of this, you guys. And I think for her sake, it's time for us to all try and come together as a ski. First off, this will be important later. And second, I feel like this is a good point on Cartman's end. Girls should help other girls. So the patriarchy divides us. Feminism isn't about being better than men. It's about girls coming together and helping all of the other genders being equal. After Heidi quit Twitter, which of the girls were really there for her? None of them. Nobody was there for her but him. Not even Kyle. Not even her supposed friends. All of whom, I'd assume 
assume are feminists. Sure, they broke up with their boyfriends using Dear John letters, but it wasn't to support Heidi or meant to be in her name. It was because said boy supposedly couldn't keep Cartman under a tighter leash, and his supposed BS was now affecting them. And all of the girls who disagreed were shamed into following the crowd. I feel like if they actually talked to Heidi after what happened, which includes Wendy, she didn't do it, or did more to bring her into their events, this would have stopped a lot of heartbreak down the road. After all, did Heidi really want the girls to do all of this? Because of what's been going on, Cartman and Heidi advocate that they should come together as a skew. <laughs> and argue on behalf of the Danish by funding for the infamous Troll Trace program. And they do it in the most sickeningly sweet way possible. <laughs> Oh, hey guys. What, what's up? Oh, right. Oh god. For why do I finally feel like Scott Malkinson, like I got diabetes? Crap, their PDA is turning my blood into sugar and messing with my cake. And I know my viewers don't like the voices. Screw you guys, you're ruining my channel. Regardless, I gotta say, it hurts knowing what's gonna come later. And at the moment, I gotta give credit where credit is due. Because their campaign, which has the support of the principal, ends up doing really well. I really feel like this is the start of something new. We're gonna help Denmark, and Denmark is gonna put an end to trolls. Then stuff happens. Gerald, who is the real troll, I know, some of you guys say you don't watch South Park, so I just want to get this point across. Well, he ends up teaming up with his troll buddies to troll Denmark in one concentrated strike. And this ends up causing Denmark, as in a country of over 5 million people, to leave social media, which horrifies Heidi, considering what happened to her. Oh no, this was a terrible idea. Heidi! And likely also because the memory of Frasia Olengard is fresh in everyone's minds. She got trolled so hard, including on a talk show, that she ended up committing not alive. My god! Oh god! Oh no! Oh! Just a friendly reminder that Gerald bullied a woman so hard that she died. And he felt no remorse, only pride. That also rhymes. Trust me, I don't mean to rhyme in a script. Their new campaign is Danishes for Denmark, but this is a much more difficult task, as Denmark has now become a global joke. And also, unlike Switzerland, they have a queen. Not that it means anything. I'm just surprised the show did not make a joke about how they have a queen. I've never seen that mentioned anywhere. Cartman keeps supporting Heidi throughout every one of her endeavors. Well, in a way, his method of support is just to put her on a pedestal and give her blank advice. Because you're smart and funny, that's why. It was a great idea, Heidi. I think that somehow, Trolling is playing a bigger part in this than anyone even realizes. Which sucks because when Cartman realizes that, like everybody else, Heidi can be flawed, their relationship is gonna fall apart quicker than a house of cards. Oh, where did it all go wrong? Presenting the episode, Fort Collins, also a town in Colorado. Lately, Cartman and Heidi have been helping Troll Trace in ways besides simply bringing normal awareness. Cartman thinks that thanks to Heidi, they'll be able to both help Denmark and finally make it to Mars in a shorter time frame than Elon Musk predicts. One day, out of the blue, Cartman goes to talk to Kyle about Troll Trace. Well, Kyle is on the toilet. And Heidi follows suit. You stop caring about seeing each other in the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom! Eric really cares about you, Kyle. He feels like he's losing you and he's really upset. Yeah, no comment. Instead, Carbon and Heidi show Kyle what they consider to be Heidi's crowning achievement, emoji analysis. In order to discover who the real troll was, Heidi's method does this. I started to look for patterns in how students used emojis. I call it emoji analysis. People can hide behind a fake name, but the way they use emojis gives them away. Yes, because clearly we can't just look up IP addresses and whatnot, unless Gerald was tech-savvy enough to spring for something like Surfshark or Nord. I could see that, but at the same time, I could see him being arrogant enough to think he doesn't. Actually, I feel like they should have made this point earlier, but that's just me. Personally, I do like the idea of emoji analysis. It's like a digital fingerprint. I started to realize that the trolls' emojis were more archaic and less elegant than the average kids. On the school message boards, it isn't a student. 
It's an adult. I was getting to that. And we have our here comes the moment y'all were waiting for. When Cartman starts to tire of Heidi and slowly begins to resent and hate her. However, because he wants somebody to torment or just wants the attention of seeming miserable, or heck, even both, he continues to keep her bound to him like a ball and chain. Later, without Heidi, Cartman goes to talk to Kyle. And Kyle takes the opportunity to spell out to Cartman what Troll Trace would really need for him. Heidi could realize what kind of a person he really is or was. Somebody like me could look up your entire internet history, print it out, and give it to Heidi. I would imagine there are some things you've done or said on the internet you wouldn't want Heidi to know about. Damn it, Kale. And you know for a fact that Kyle would definitely do that. Maybe the future specials were right. Kyle really is the reason that Cartman is the way he is. Actually, let's hold off on that. Now, looking back, I feel like this is a fear that really makes no sense when you start to think about it. Once again, Heidi should know what Cartman was really like. It was an open secret. Heck, it wasn't even a secret. It's a known fact that Cartman was a mean, spoiled, selfish, entitled person. To me, this whole idea would only make sense if Carpin was still the same old bigot he always was, and he was just hanging out with Heidi, either because of necessity, because nobody else would hang out with him, or for some grand plan. Maybe he wanted to mess with Kyle and the others for breaking his stuff, which seems totally in character, or if, hey, he genuinely liked Heidi and did not want to break her heart. Regardless, because of Kyle's comments, Carpin Cartman starts to think that Heidi is secretly going to terraform Mars for the express purpose of capturing men and turning them into cattle to harvest their man gravy and their humor for jokes. Carpin, look, I'm a woman, a gender studies major, and a feminist, and I will tell you for a fact that would never happen. Windstorms like that don't happen on Mars because of the air pressure system. Even the author of The Martian said that was the one liberty he took, if only because there wouldn't be a book or movie without it. To me, I think the biggest problem with their relationship overall is a lack of clear communication, especially on Cartman's end, which kind of taught me the value of communicating with others, especially your significant other, or at least setting proper boundaries. Maybe don't go full chatty Kathy, but you should be open to talking or having tough conversations. To me, if Cartman just sat down Heidi and told her what he was really like before, he would have avoided a lot of heartbreak. Hey, for all he knows, maybe Heidi really did hate the new Ghostbusters movie. He could say, Heidi, look, I used to have these insane views, yada yada yada, but being with you and not having a cell phone has really opened up my eyes. Just like Emily Blunt in the My Little Pony movie. Yes, babe. Just like Emily Blunt in the My Little Pony movie. Women are smart and funny. Get over it. Instead, Cartman lies and says all of this crap about Jimmy. And during the movie, I was like, wait, where's my phone? And I couldn't find it. And then Jimmy said, haha, screw you, Cartman. And he was holding my phone and he ran off with it and said, I'm gonna send a bunch of texts and emails from your phone so everyone thinks they're from you. And I'm just worried that if people look at my internet history, they're gonna think that all that stuff came from me! Yep. Totally understandable. And it's kind of tragic to watch because this is a constant problem down the line. Corbin has a problem with Heidi and for one reason or another refuses to voice it to her. He'll gladly tell anybody else willing to listen and then he acts like Corbin because he starts to bottle up these issues. He internalizes these ideas and it makes him all the more miserable and causes him to mistreat Heidi. Heck, even Heidi told him to stop being passive aggressive and just speak up. What are you pissed off about? Ugh, I'm not pissed off, I'm just hanging out. So you're just gonna be passive aggressive again and not talk about what you're feeling? For an episode example, well, I might be skipping around here, but let's look at Sons of Witches from season 21. Oh, it's a Halloween episode. Now this is the one time I agree with Cartman on literally anything, kind of. Halloween is coming up and Heidi and Cartman have decided to go to the pumpkin patch, which I think is a trunk or treat kind of event. And it's one of his favorite events of the year. 
and as somebody who loves Halloween, I totally understand. There, you can get pumpkins galore and do petting zoos, bouncy castles, churro machines. It's like every kid's dream. The thing is, on the day in question, Heidi takes too long getting ready, and by Cartman's wording, this isn't the first time she's made him late to something. Just because she has to do her makeup or dress up and can't manage her time properly. Okay. Oh, I forgot my glitter lip gloss. You don't need glitter lip gloss! Eric, are you upset? Do you need to talk about something? No! Now, once again, I hate to say it, but I kind of am on Cartman's side here. Trust me, it sucks when you really want to do something and you miss it partially or entirely because of somebody else's F up. Especially when it isn't something like you were stuck waiting in traffic, you're just stuck waiting because they're taking too long of a shower. And in a way, it's also kind of embarrassing and inconsiderate. Sorry if I'm ranting a little bit, it's just that this is a bit of a pet peeve of mine, so I've always made an effort to get ready early. Even if sometimes I get ready way too early. Even if it means I'll be right on time because I'm very punctual. Thanks to Heidi taking too long and the witch attack, Cartman ends up missing the entire event. Like, literally inches away from it. Even if he probably wouldn't get to do very much to begin with because one, all of his friends already went home, and two, most everything already closed or was about to. Yes, we are just getting here. Okay, uh, go on in, I suppose. Petting zoo's closed, and I think they stopped the churro machine. The petting zoo's clip. The petting zoo is closed. However, much like giving Kyle HIV, I just agree with his frustrations. After finding out that a witch is kidnapping children, Carpen sets up a trap to get Heidi out of his life forever, i.e. kill her, by dressing up as Hansel and Gretel, even if there's a huge chance he could also get kidnapped. Eric, come on, this is a bad idea. Let's turn around. Well, Heidi, if we'd been on time, we wouldn't need to take a shortcut, but I wanted to give you your space to get ready. So he was perfectly willing to kill Heidi just because she made him late to something. Some boyfriend you are. And to seal the deal, he files a police report after Heidi is abducted. And that if there's a big fat witch around, maybe you shouldn't walk through the woods dressed as Hansel and Gretel. Uh, whoa, whoa, not cool, Rick, not cool. I will have your badge, sir! Yep, it's his body, and it's his decision. Now, in-universe, after Cartman rants about Heidi's poor time management skills to his guy friends, Kyle says that if Heidi was annoying him that much, he should just break up with her. My life is a living hell, you guys! Then break up with her! You clearly can't stand her! Let the poor girl go! I've tried! It's impossible! Counterpoint. If Cartman wanted to keep his relationship intact, here's what I think he should have done. Talk to her. Either he should start lying and say that the events he wants to go to are earlier than they actually are. That way, either they get there on time, or yeah, they'll be late, but only by like a few minutes. Or he could go without her, but say, could you meet me there? Don't worry, I'll save us a spot. Or stop making admittedly hilarious passive-aggressive comments. And just come out and say, Heidi, I think you have a problem with your time management. And it's making me miss out on doing anything fun. Could you please get ready a few hours earlier? Or suggested ways to help? No, instead he defaults to Cartman behavior. Of course, Heidi is freed at the end, eventually. Come on out, little girl. C come on, little girl. Everyone's waiting on you. But because Cartman sort of wants to be miserable, he just sits there and takes it when Heidi wants to go trick-or-treating. All ready to trick-or-treat? Yeah, no, I've been ready for a couple hours now. Cool, I just want to put on some lip gloss. Anyhow, going back to season 20, Cartman decides that he has to keep his relationship with Heidi by lying. Something else you shouldn't do. This election really got to you too, huh? Yes, Heidi. For the first time, I'm really scared for the future. Me too, babe. 
Me too. And this would be the start of a path of darkness. In a way, I both love and hate this decision. It's funny because he wants to save his relationship this much. It's weird we see him care about anything. But it also shows that Cartman really hasn't changed at all. He's just afraid that Heidi is going to turn him into livestock, and he wants to ensure he's on her good side. It's kind of like how he thinks Token is gonna riot because of the Trayvon Martin verdict, and the only way he could avoid was to kiss up to Token and his girlfriend by having Token feel bad for him. The results of the 2016 election sours his mood further. Now he decides that Heidi and him have to get off planet before things go to pot by visiting SpaceX. Babe, there's no way to get to Mars right now. Yes, Heidi, I think there is. But you have to totally trust me and know that I'm doing this to save us. Which feels a little weird he wants Heidi in particular to go with him. You'd think he'd want to get there first, just to make sure that women couldn't terraform Mars. And considering how to Cartman, Heidi is practically the next David Hawking, that just makes things equally stupid. Wouldn't it make more sense if, say, Cartman went on his own to SpaceX, and then Heidi gets worried and finds out from perhaps his mother or Butters, and then she goes to SpaceX and things proceed like they do here, maybe Cartman could tell her the truth, or hey, just continue lying. Whatever works best. Regardless, during members only, member, Cartman and Heidi make it to SpaceX in order to go to Mars, but fine, they are not the first people to have that idea. Everybody wants to go to Mars nowadays, including Cher. Would these people still want to go to Mars if it meant there is a high possibility they might not come back, either because stuff could go wrong or it could be too complicated to bring them back because of Bill Clinton and Bill Cosby and their gentlemen's club. Oh jeez. Butters believes he's changed. He likes women again and he now wants to go to Mars. Oh, I see what you're doing. What, babe? Oh, nothing, babe. I'm just... Do you think you could tell me some jokes? <laughs> As it turns out, it's not feasible to get to Mars at this point in time. Whoa, 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 what about going to Mars? Mars? We're still about 10 years away from going to Mars. Maybe eight. Duh! I mean, maybe the moon. We are making the lunar gateway, and we have the Artemis program. I heard that's going pretty good. But Mars is a longer-term plan. At best, all Elon Musk can do is give tours and encourage people to look to the stars and continue all the hard work. Maybe we can help you get to Mars sooner. I'm not sure if you know our friend Heidi. She's really smart and really funny. Like... How funny. You know, because Elon guest starred, I could make a joke about other things, but I won't. Literally because I can't think of anything. You should meet my girlfriend. She's really smart and really funny. Oh, Elon. Oh, Christ, Elon. Heidi is made to look at meth, and she is hitting a dead end in a paranormal park. You got it figured out, babe? Babe, I have no idea what any of this means. Heidi, yes, you do. You just have to get over yourself. And what's worse is Butters is trying to support his friends. The truth is, girls hate us, Eric. And one day, they plan to make us obsolete. Stick us underground where we just get milk. Boy's only hope is to start over on Mars. Projection is a harsh mistress. Eventually, Heidi gets it because of a little something called emoji analysis. I call it emoji analysis. Unfortunately, this means that Heidi is getting all of the attention Cartman coveted for himself. Wait a minute, she might be onto something here. Okay, okay, now could you just- They're out of sequence, I'll show you! What the f*** is happening? Okay, now you're seeming in character. Finally, during this one season, we get the aptly titled End of Serialization as we know it, where Cartman tries to tell all of SpaceX what's going on, and of course they don't listen. That's ridiculous. Why would women need us to do that? They're just as funny as men. If there's even a little part of you that doesn't really believe that. You know, I'm surprised they haven't made more episodes about Elon. The only good thing about Cartman being there is that Kyle and his friends now have enough manpower to shut down the internet. Plus, the US government helped. Well, looks like you're gonna have to kind of start over, huh, Elon? 
Maybe you should just go back to your little cars, huh? Which means that because Cartman was way too chicken to break up with Heidi, he must stay with her and be eternally miserable. All right, time for season 21, the big one. This is where the relationship starts to radioactively break down. As you know, in season 20, Carpenter believed that Heidi was going to enslave men. For some reason, I guess because he now realizes he's probably not going to Mars, he switches his approach. His new plan is gaining sympathy for himself by telling everybody that Heidi is an abusive B-word when behind closed doors. We were just trying to have a nice lunch and she started going off on me. Like a Jekyll and Hyde, it's been going on for a long time. Which I feel makes Cartman's behavior ten times worse because it's more realistic, so to speak. Especially when he tries to employ the other kids as his flying monkeys. But she needs help, but I'm scared. Can I count on you guys' support? How do you change someone who's mentally abusive? I don't know. Or how they don't care because it's Cartman, which means that none of them think to help Heidi. At least with season 20, while a little abusive, it was still funny because it's so over the top. Here, he gaslights Heidi, especially when Heidi says she wants their relationship to be 50-50, meaning Cartman should contribute more. But I was wrong to say a relationship is 50-50. It's 100-100. And that I'll start putting in 100% every day. Just saying, all of this stuff could happen in real life. It's textbook abusive behavior, emotional and verbal. Run, Heidi, run! Heck, on top of that, he somehow got a cell phone. Well, I mean, his mother is Leanne, but she couldn't afford him an iPad. And this perplexes Heidi. Hey, baby, how are you? Oh, so you do have your phone. Yeah, I just use it sometimes. Okay, I just thought you said mobile phones are the devil. But at the same time, Heidi has one. I have questions. By the episode's end, Carbon breaks up with Heidi, just to make her all the more miserable. And I can't fix you. Only you can do that. Eric, I'm so confused. That's not going to work on me anymore. And so begins a new dreaded cycle. As shown in Put It Down, Carbon apparently called up Heidi in the middle of the night and told her he did not trust himself to be without her, i.e. take me back this instant or I'm going to commit unalive and it's going to be your fault and you're gonna be forced to live with that. I just want to make sure he's alright. We broke up and he called saying he was about to do it. I'm still really scared for him. And once again, that makes their relationship all the more sad. That's not love. That's a hostage situation. Look, if you have an SO and they ever try this, whether or not they're serious, call the police. They're putting you and themselves in danger just to manipulate you. If they're not really going to do it and they just want you to stay by their side, well, it's good to put some distance between y'all. If they're serious and they're actually going to hurt themselves, you're making making sure they're getting the help they need. However, in a weirdly dark way, I like how Carbon is doing this for the attention. Not that I like what he's doing, it's just that his song is way too catchy. Anyhow, Carbon makes his own campaign, this time for not alive awareness for himself. If nobody shows up on the day in question or supports him, he will intentionally shed his mortal coil. And this is on top of trying to take over Distracted Driving Week, when people are actually dying. No! Uh, are you freaking serious? Speaking of, there's a few days left in the month. We kind of have that campaign for PMDD awareness. Just know that I will not harm myself if you don't donate. I'm not a Cartman. I understand some people can't. I just like getting the word out there. But unlike Cartman, I am actually appreciative of the stories people have posted about their experiences with PMDD. It's nice to know my efforts are for something. Cartman couldn't care less that his campaign is helping people who aren't his. Our website's already full of kids saying they feel the same way as you and want to get help. They're just trying to get attention. What, are you actually talking online? Heck, he doesn't like the fact that the distracted driving kids did stuff for their campaigns, like bring in actual resources. We're gonna have lots of games and face painting, and what are you guys gonna have? We're gonna have some guest speakers and also provide grievance counselors for those who need it. 
Yeah, grievance counseling, that sounds super fun. Eventually, we get to doubling down, which explains things from Heidi's perspective. One night out of the blue, perhaps after Heidi broke up with Cartman again, he calls her up and gets angry, but blames his behavior on his blood sugar. I told you, that's what happens after I eat! My blood sugar spikes and I get all anxious and then I cry. Eric, you can't just keep being mean to me and blaming it on your blood sugar. Which, look, Carbon, I've had problems with my relationships because of my mental illnesses, but I try to make up for it after the fact, like explaining my mistakes, realizing they have a right to their actions, or knowing my limits and removing myself from the situation. What are you doing besides calling up someone at 3 a.m.? My mom's fault. She feeds me all this crap and my body doesn't know how to process it. Mom! Mom! Yes, hon? You've f***ed up my life, ma'am! Well, I mean, in a way, he's right. Hedy proposes that because Cartman's blood sugar is a problem for him, he should change up his diet. Perhaps he should start being vegan. That dirty fish! Packing my lunch for me? Cartman, the trick with a good diet is finding out what works for you. But unlike me, Kyle actually has the power to lecture Cartman in-universe. I am so sick of hearing you call Heidi horrible things! That's because you don't understand how much it sucks to be in a relationship! Kyle is perplexed why Heidi is sticking by Cartman, despite how he's been treating her lately. <laughs> lately? What the hell is going on? Well, it's not our problem. It is our problem. This is affecting us, our whole school. There's got to be a reason she sticks by him. Which is what I've been trying to explain all this time, Kyle. Did you not watch this video? And I do and don't appreciate this. Obviously, yes, it's good somebody is there trying to support Heidi, but at the same time, it feels like Kyle is doing this just because it's Cartman, and it's his life's mission to destroy him. What if Heidi was dating anybody else? Would he be this concerned? As it turns out, Heidi knows full well that Cartman is an a-hole, but instead of supporting her, whenever she goes to somebody for advice, they effectively patronize her and make her feel as though she has no other choice but to stay with him. I.e., oh, you poor girl, you know he's awful. You've always knew he's awful, but we told you so. Look, don't you think I get it enough from my girlfriends? He sucks, Heidi. What's wrong with you? How could anyone ever go with him? I was just following my heart. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Well, what is with South Park talking about abusive relationships from all angles? How they can go sour? How everybody around us has an effect on it? Bystanders, etc. This is so great. What's worse is, Cartman became a vegan simply to continue gaslighting Heidi. This time, he lies and says that he got her beyond fast food. You know, when beyond fast food wasn't a thing yet. And he forces her to eat it. You, you gotta taste this, just try it. It tastes just like KFC. I know, right? Yeah, it's really good. Delicious. And if you know anything about vegans, once you start to introduce meat back into their diets, especially all at once, it will make them very sick. I mean, look at Super Size Me. And he calls special attention to Heidi's bloating. Yeah, well, cool, babe. Maybe you should, uh, just waddle on down to the nurse's office. Can you come with? Oh, sure. Oh my god, Heidi gained a pound, everybody. Look at how fat this average-sized girl is. Hey Heidi, why don't you go on an all-carb diet and eat some Caltein bars? It's not my fault sweatpants are the only thing that fits you. Screw you, Cartman, you tubby tub tub. What, are you gonna attack me because nobody calls you tubby? Well, come through the screen and get me. What's worse is nobody even notices Heidi is bloated. Heck, I didn't even notice on my first couple of watches. Which just makes what he's doing all the more hurtful. Can't you see what's happening? Kyle, it's none of our business. In a way, I think we're all going out with Cartman right now. Kyle tries to go to the girls to get them to support Heidi a little bit more. You can't keep saying we told you so because if you make her feel dumb, she just doubles down and tries to prove to herself that it wasn't dumb. And they kind of realize why he's doing this. Oh my god, he so likes Heidi. Obvi. No, I don't. Do I? How to fool me. What's worse is that Butters was fully prepared to help Kyle until Kyle got called out. You're right. It's our moral obligation. Yeah, no, we're not getting involved in that. Oh, we're not? 
Yeah, no, yeah, I, uh, I think we need to stay out of it. Some ally he is. At least until Carbon once again bullies Heidi in public. So Kyle goes to talk to Heidi and becomes the shoulder for her to cry on. I was in a really bad place. I felt pushed away by society. Then this guy came along who told me all the things I wanted to hear, and I just... Went with it. Because of this, Heidi breaks up with Cartman for good and seems to be going steady with Cal. Cap? Cap? Yeah, Kyle. And this leads to one of my favorite Cartman moments ever, which I am only going to partially spoil. <laughs> You know, it sucks whenever I watch this episode when it airs live on Comedy Central because there's always a bumper that just covers the menorah. However, something happens. A pattern. Heidi gets welcomed back by her girlfriends who take her out to dinner. And it seems they still don't realize you don't do something like this to an abused victim. I mean, don't treat them with little kid gloves, but you could just say, congratulations, we're sorry for how we treated you. If you need anything, just ask. And they could have been done with it, but no! <laughs> it was just what I believed in. Don't worry, Heidi, we're not gonna keep telling you we told you so. But we told you so! <laughs> and I know they're using this message to apply to abuse, but I feel like you could also apply this to most other victim narratives. Oh, you look a lot better this way! I hated how you looked when you were fat. Good thing you learned to put the fork down. Oh, it's great you don't do drugs anymore. You looked like a tweaked out scarecrow. See? Rehab's easy. Maybe all somebody who's suffering needs is is support. True support. Not condescending, well-intentioned comments. As a result, Heidi ends up crawling back to Carbon, who starts to implant in her another mindset. Racism. And this causes her to leave Kyle. I'm sorry, Kyle, but everybody's trying to live life the best they can. It's hard enough without your people always trying to get ahead. Dude, did she just call me a dirty Jew? I mean, I guess, yeah. And you know what this means, right? Heidi's transformation into Cartman is complete. Presenting Fat Heidi. No offense. During Moss Piglets, Heidi starts to act like Cartman. And I gotta say, it's equal parts tragic, equal parts kind of awesome, but mostly tragic. And it's something you obviously should not glorify. People change. They say you become more and more like the person you're with, and I guess it's true with Heidi. Hey, guys! What's up? First off, it's tragic to me because Heidi essentially became the thing she hated. A fatter, meaner version of Cartman. With zits. Just saying, we know Cartman doesn't have zits. All because of the abuse and neglect she got from literally everybody in her life. Except possibly her parents. But the awesome part to me is how she sort of calls out the girls for how they treated her. Like how she makes fun of one of them for living in a tiny home. Don't get all aggro on me because you're pissed off your family lives in a trailer. My family doesn't live in a trailer. We live in a tiny home. Just don't even respond to her. Just ignore her. I'll try, but she's such a b They were told repeatedly not to do that, and they still did. I really gotta give props to Jessica Mackinson for how she's voicing Heidi this time around. It's a really good female Cartman. Am I being paid to judge the science fair? No. Do I have a choice? No. Oh, yes, master. Let me judge that science fair for you, sir. My only complaint is, I wish we didn't get Isla and Teresa as the only people she complains to. It's nice to give a name and a face to background characters, I just would want her to call out the other girls. Like Red, or Bebe, or Annie, or Nicole. They're the most prominent girls and the main instigator. It would be good to give them the spotlight again. Anyhow, while this is going on, the school wants Heidi to judge the special needs science fair. Because Heidi previously said she was going to. And she is not happy about this. But you're always the judge of the special ed science fair because you're our best science student. So now I'm gonna be punished by being forced to judge a bunch of handicapped kids? Plus, you gotta wake up early and then it's like, ugh. Once you get home, you're too awake to go back to sleep. When it's all said and done, it just screws up your whole schedule. Now normally, when Cartman is angry about anything, unless it's relevant to the episode, he just rants and raves about it. Maybe you should. Maybe I will! Maybe you should. Maybe I will! And then he moves on to the next thing. Heidi is in Cartman in that regard. She's kind of like Cartman, but with the ability to follow through. 
Oh, dude. She puts her old activism skills to the test in order to get out of the science fair, be it hosting an assembly or shaming butters to be the new judge. A go-to for any Cartman wannabe. By the episode's end, Heidi gets out of the special ed science fair by making sure the greatest experiment there cannot happen and by crippling the development of science and football. Screw all you guys. <laughs> No! Ah! Ew, think about that. That must be like drinking tap water, like sewage water. Ew. However, I gotta say that in a way, Cartman Heidi is a pretty good form of karma for normal Cartman. Cartman is now afraid of Heidi once again, for real reasons. I feel something moving around. It <laughs> Snuggle! Okay, okay, honey. <laughs> But he also tries to use her as another form of sympathy. Come on, babe. We all want the old Heidi back. Which makes me wonder if he wanted Heidi more like him in order to make her more able to be bended to his will. Because in his mind, his ideal partner is him because he's a narcissist because of sheer boredom. Or if he just wanted to abuse her and did not think of the end result. Or heck, maybe all of the above. After two episodes of Heidi being Cartman, we get a proper conclusion in the episode Splatty Tomato. I'm seriously dehydrated and starving. After Garrison runs into the forest and presumably kidnaps Kyle's brother, Cartman and Heidi team up with the other kids to go on a rescue mission. Well, before we get to the super awesome rescue mission, <laughs> I first have to play a line to show you the main theme of this episode. You know, those shows can be really harmful. Oh, stop being a victim. Jesus Christ! Along the way, Heidi starts to find herself. The same way Alvin Lipschi found himself. You know, when he found Ruth and Gladys and Rosemary and Irving. First off, Kyle calls her out, and this makes her think. Oh, what's the matter, Kyle? Don't want me around because you had the hots for me and I shut you down? I would never have the hots for the person you are now. And Heidi starts to coincidentally find remainders of her old life. You know, the life before she ballooned up, the bridge that started this whole mess, the path where she got kidnapped, the park where she and Cartman started their relationship and had the happiest days of her life. All the while, she's being followed by the ghost of her past self. Who turned you into this, Heidi? Shut up! You don't know anything! Heidi, I think Spooky Walk in the Woods is making you lose it a little bit. Okay, you know what, maybe the ghost comparison was more spot on than I first wanted to admit. Why does this remind me of Harley Quinn from the Arkham games? Eventually, Heidi, overcome with resentment, holds Cartman at gunpoint and tries to blame him for what happened. You controlled me and manipulated me and turned me into this! I did this. I let being a victim become a way of life. And if you always make yourself the victim, you can justify being awful. Holy crap. Well, I guess in a way, Cartman is partially responsible. But what about her friends? They never get called out. In the end, Heidi doesn't bow down to Cartman's frets anymore. Whether it's that people are looking at them or that he's going to harm himself or anything like that. I'm sorry. You can be the victim. I can't. Heidi? Heidi, I've got to do it. Here we go. Heidi! And she permanently breaks up with him. And that's all, folks. While it does suck, Heidi goes back to just being a nameless background character. Hey, at least this time, she got a hat and she got to keep the hat. And I gotta say, I can't believe Sal Park managed to do an abusive relationship like this from all angles. And if you know somebody who is suffering, the best thing you can do is listen to them, not make them feel worse than they probably already do. As for the victim, idea, that's been something I've been trying to apply to my own life. You're still allowed to hate the person in question. The thing is, your actions are up to you. You should try to move on and do what makes you happy. However, time to go back to the original question. Could Cartman and Heidi have worked out? And I gotta say, to some degree, maybe. If Cartman got over his communication problems, maybe they would have had a chance. But it's just as equally likely that something that 
it wasn't Kyle would have gotten him to go back. And if this is what was going to happen, maybe it's better they did not get together in the first place. Because they are never, ever, ever getting back together. Like, <laughs> ever. And if you or someone you know is experiencing domestic abuse, once again, the domestic abuse hotline is here for you. 24-7, 365. 1-800-799-7233. Stay safe and bye. Hey Heidi, what's up? Oh, hey babe, what's going on? What are you up to? Nothing, just talking to my girlfriends about tiny homes. I can't decide if I should wear leggings or not. Is it gonna be cold? Should I? Is it cold out? You think I should put a hoodie on over this? Nah, covers up my costume too much, don't you think? Okay, already. Oh wait, hang on.